Welcome to the final powerhouse in this series. Greenwood's right there. It says our last show, and we're going to take you through a few of our favourite moments and some of our favourite cars that we've seen, so check these out. The basic engine of the Skyline is a straight six-cylinder twin-turbo engine. Um, the car's been modified on the bottom end for strength, so it's had a steel crank, steel rods, billeted pistons. It's been bored out to a larger CC. It's fitted with a uh, twin-plate uh, steel head gasket with uh, large camshafts in the head. Head's been gas flowed to get the, the air in and out pretty quickly. Uh, the turbos are, are larger HKS turbos. They have roller bearings, so they spin up quickly. So there's very little lag involved with it. All the pipe work's been altered. Uh, the induction system has been altered to get the air in quick. And the exhaust manifold's altered to get the air out. Excellent, and I believe the uh, gearbox is extra special as well. Yeah, the gearbox is a Hollinger six-speed gearbox from Australia. Um, it's just an up-down gearbox, uh, pretty road-friendly. And ex you don't have to use the clutch when you start going, so it's obviously quicker on acceleration. Excellent. Andy, would you mind turning it over for us so we can uh, all have a listen? No problem. Now, of course, I heard Andy turn up in this, and I thought there was an earthquake outside, but it was actually Andy turning up in this skyline. That's an absolute beast before we even start. It's absolutely gorgeous in there and looks very luxurious. But the one thing everybody is going to want to know about, Steve, has definitely got to be this body kit. Talk me through it. Right, well, it's a dimmer body kit. It's a copy, exact replica of the uh, Works 106 rally car. And it's painted up in the 306 colours, I see. Yeah, it's painted the same as the 306 colours. Excellent. Now, we've actually got some photos of the conversion itself. Yeah. Would you talk me through them, please? Well, firstly, we've got the car standard as it came from the factory. We then stripped it all down, fitted all the new panels, which is the front bumper, bolt-on front wings, the side skirts. We then fabricate the rear quarter panels on, the rear bumper and the spoiler. Then we take it to be painted. As you can see, here's all the panels as we're fitting them. Then we took it to the paint shop. And then, as you can see, we pe prepped and primed the whole car. Um, we used two pack paint, then we painted the whole car white. Um, once the car was painted white, it had to be flatted off, which is rubbed down. Then we had to mask it up. We used removable vinyl to make the actual jagged effect of the lines. That took two days. We then painted it blue, flattened it all off, primed it up, lacquered it, and polished it. Yeah. That's definitely not any sort of kit that I've seen you can buy before. No, no. Um, well, I thought it'd be different because like every different Fiesta's like Dave's got the Escort Cosmo front bumper, yeah. which I was thinking of buying, but I thought, no. I have to try and do something different. So what I did, I went and bought an SI front bumper. Definite Cosworth. Yeah, we got the Cosworth. Right? Yeah, Cosworth splitter. Yeah. And then I thought, well, what can I do then? So I had to think about it, and I bought some uh, Subaru Impressor spot lights and yeah. had them moulded in. And they look the business now. Yeah. These have these have got to be for show. They can't actually yeah. cool in your brains no, down, no, right? No, no, it's for show. That yeah. it's an extra touch. Excellent. Let's just have a quick look at what you've got under here. Got it. Yeah. Right, now that to me looks like it is supposed to be in a Fiesta, but you're going to prove me wrong yet again, oh, aren't you? Yeah, oh, I am, I am. Um, well, what we did, we went down to Specialised Engines in London. Yeah. And we had a talk about it, and what I did, I had um, a 1649 engine put in, which has been um, modified with a gas flow and ported head. Yeah. A Piper 285 cam. It's been fully lightened and balanced. I've had uh, the ECU... Remapped. That's the engine of the... That's yeah. the brain of the engine, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, cos... Um, what that does, it maps the fuel because a standard XR2A has 
the injector's only open on 10 seconds, this opens on um, 14 seconds now, so it's getting that bit extra petrol into the engine to get the horsepower up. Excellent, so what sort of horsepower are you actually looking at having out of this, Mike? Well, a standard one's about 105 brakes, so I'm looking at about 135. That's brilliant. Right, lovely, lovely polo here. Great big wheels on it, 17s. Yeah, 17 inch wheels on it. Big brakes. Yeah, it's four pot wheel woods on there. And uh, single wipe conversion, yeah? Yeah. But uh, this car's got a big secret, hasn't it? That's it, it's what under the, what's under the bonnet. It's under the bonnet, there's a VR6. Now, uh, I believe that the Germans and the magazines said it couldn't be done. That's right, yeah. So, so how did you do it then? Well, we got a brand new car, uh -huh. took it to the workshop, took the original engine out of it, which was a one litre, and then we started work on fabricating the engine bed to take the VR6 unit. Why is that because of the sheer weight of it? Yeah, it's a lot heavier engine, and it's also a Polo engines mounted on the inner wings. So right. we had to fabricate an engine bed to take the weight. Where's the engine gone? We've put the engine in the back in this one, and we've put a fuel tank in the front. And of course the uh, radiator as well. That's right, the radiator at the front to cool the rear engine. Excellent. Now, we've got the big brake servo there for yeah. the uh, huge disc that it's going to take to stop this thing. Now, the action end right up here at the back. Ian, what is it? It's 3 litre VR6 turbo. It's 440 brake horsepower, and it's seriously quick. I can imagine. Now, putting the engine in the back, you're going to have to have done something to the shell. What's, you know, what's it entailed? That's right. We started off, first of all, we cut, cut the floor pan away, uh, strengthened all the chassis rails, then it went to Wales, where a full roll cage has been fitted to strengthen the shell to take the power. This one has two engines. Ian, will you talk me through this, please? Yeah. It's a 2 litre 16 valve engine with a gas flowed head and a pair of twin Delorto 45 carburetors on it. No, the, the two litre wasn't standard until the Mark III. What is that? That's anybody? right. The, uh, the engines in these are actually out of uh, an Audi uh, with the 16 valve head on top of that. Right, so what sort of power do you think you're actually getting from that? It's getting 200 brake horsepower. Wow. So is that both engines 200 horsepower? Yeah, the 200 horsepower each, yeah. OK, now I notice you're running very big alloys on the front and the rear. What sort of sizes are we talking about there? The 8x15s on the front and 9x15s on the rear. Why have you gone for such large wheels on the back? Just to help with traction and the handling of the car. Right. Now, to get those in, I notice you've gone for the wide arch uh, option. Have you bought those in? Yep, they've come from uh, direct from Germany, those. Right, and DTM wing mirrors, a nice little touch, I like that. Have they been bought in as well? They've been bought in, yeah. OK. I just want to ask you a quick question about how did you get the two engines to run? Can you run them independently or do you have to run them both at the same time? No, if you're just running around, you just use the front engine. If you want to engage the rear engine, you basically just connect the gear linkage cables up and turn the ignition switch on and you're away. They're both running. What sort of problems have you come across in trying to actually get these to link up? The only thing you've got to worry about is that they both select the, the same gear and that the throttle cables uh, correctly adjusted. So you've got one throttle actually running both engines? It's one throttle pedal but two, two individual cables. Right. I just want to know, what are the two reservoirs on the front in front of you? They're for the hydraulic clutches. And the two dials? One's for the front engine for the rev counter and the other's for the rear engine. Right. OK. Just moving down to the second engine, is it exactly the same as the, as the other engine that's in the front? It is. It's the sa same spec engine. It's 2 litre 16 valve uh, and it's also got nitrous as well. Is that just running the rear engine, the nitrous? It's not, no, the nitrous is on both engines, front and rear. Right. And, I mean, a tiny little touch has got to be these two huge exhaust pipes coming out of the back. Where did that idea come from? Uh, the Lotus Elise as in coming out the back like that. You've both got two of the same machines there, but uh, they're pretty radically different. We'll start with uh, you, Roland. Yours looks brilliant, but how does it perform? Uh, performs very well. Um, it's currently produced a 12.64 second quarter mile down the drag strip. That's incredible. Um, yeah, terminal speed was 112.96, which is currently the record. That's the time to beat. Um, and it's done it with very good reliability and very good drivability. So we're very pleased, yeah. That's excellent. What about you, Clive? Have you 
managed to perform to that kind of standard? Well, we're getting there. Uh, last October, September, October, uh, we ran it at Santa Pod. We did a 13 three quarter mile, a terminal speed of th uh, 107. Uh, but since then, we've done some work over the winter and managed to find another 84 brake horsepower. So we'll be out there again this year. Right. In the future. So what brake horsepower is it running on there? Well, we had it recently on the rolling road again. Um, we had 285, 290 brake out of it. Uh, that was at 19, 20 pound a boost. Um, but we're holding it at that to see how we go because it is a bit of a test bed. It's a different approach. So. Oh, yeah. Well, what about what about your car rolling? What have you got? Car's producing over 300 brake horsepower. Um, very reliably. We, we we haven't actually pulled the engine apart for the last three years up until just before this show. Uh, just to tidy it up a little bit. It's and kind of very good. <laughs> <laughs> we were very pleased with it. It was no problems inside the engine at all. It was um, all very clean. So we yeah. literally just put everything back together as it was. One or two new products that we've added to it. But um, yeah, overall, basically the same. 911 turbo, Paul, but with a lot of difference. You know a lot more about it than I ever would. Can you tell us what's happened with this car? It's an extremely radical car. It started life as a, an, an obviously 911 turbo. Um, at the time when I bought it, I had an Alpine GTA, which was right. very quick. Yeah, they are nice. Uh, tuned up by uh, Jan Speed. I was very, very pleased with it and a bit disappointed, to be honest, when I first drove this. And it started um, a, a course of events which have culminated in the car in its current specification. It's got more than 600 horsepower and more than 600 foot-pounds of torque at the rear wheels. And that's what really counts, isn't it? Yes, it's the torque and horsepower combined. Uh, it weighs 1,100 kilos wet. Uh, therefore is probably the fastest vehicle on the road in the UK at the moment. Oh my goodness, and you've actually done some quite high speeds in this car. Eh? Yes, um, rather than uh, quotes, uh, obscure horsepower figures etc, we developed it with K&M, a research and development in Warrington, right. on their rolling road facility which is state of the art. Um, and it was specifically built uh, in its current guise to sprint in uh, the 930 Sports um, Sprint Series in the North West. Yeah. So uh, what kind of speed are we talking then, Paul, if we... Um, it'll turn a sub three second naught to 60 without My being absolutely precise. It'll, it'll actually do better than that. That's um, very fast. 4.7 seconds to 100, mm. 7 seconds to 140, and we'll do way in excess of 200 miles an hour. Now, the thing that got me, I mean, that's a very fast car, but it's got four gears. Yes. And can you tell us again about what it does in first gear? It does 60 in first, and just second. over 100 in second. <laughs> <laughs> what happens in third? Um, close to 170 miles an hour. In third gear? In third gear, yes. Blimey. Yeah. And, uh, and then we get a nice big top speed. How much money are we talking that you've spent on this particular car? It's an expensive car to buy anyway. Um, I w it's, it must be close to £200,000 over the years. It's been eight years in development. <laughs> Sadly, we've reached the uh, end of this half, but lucky for you, we'll be back in two minutes. So be here. This over here is the Yokohama Beetle. It's a project car that they've done. And believe me, I believe this is the way forward. This is a beautiful little machine. You're gonna get your notice no matter what you do. The uh, graphics on the side are done by the same people that do the Jordan F1 car, which is a nice little touch, I think. Let's start with this splitter on the back. Looks like it's a standard piece of kit, I think. It finishes the car off beautifully. Little nice uh, touch on old beetles that I've just found. Look at that. I think that's really quite a trick. Carbon fibre filler cap. Very nice indeed. We've got some lovely wheels on here, which I'll show you in a minute. I'd want to be seen personally if I was in this car. So what's all this about? Tinted windows. It's hiding what's in here. Come here and have a look at this. I think this is fabulous. Look at that. These are, are not yet for sale these seats they've been specially put in here for the team and uh, it finishes the interior and believe me they're very nice to sit in one day you'll be able to buy them yourself like i said the wheels fantastic you've seen these before evo r's you can have them with the nut there or you can take this off which i quite like it well you can if you can get your fingers behind it anyway comes off and then you can put the nut back on Fantastic, I like that. Flunt splitter, lovely. It's very hard, so you've got to watch where you're going. No speed bumps on this thing at all. You grab that, it's going to rip the entire front off by the looks of it. It's very, very hard. The piece of resistance of this car is under here, and this is what makes it special for me. Look at that. Tim Styles at his best once again. 
Who'd have thought that you could fit a VR6 engine in the Beetle? Okay, I've just jumped into the passenger seat of Christian Dex V6 here. Christian, how'd you get into this? Well, uh, I've always been racing. My father was a racing driver, so I'd, I'd obviously been at circuits all my life. And then at the beginning of last year, decided that I wanted to have a go myself. I uh, did the XR3 i series, and then um, I was fortunate enough to get a test with Team Brask at the end of last year, and that's developed into the drive for me for this year. So, so do you enjoy driving these a lot more than the XR3 i's? Yeah, it's a completely different thing. Yeah, Tell us about how, how it's different. Well, the, the XR3 i is a tin car for a start. It's a normal uh, road going chassis, whereas the, the V6 is a space frame proper race car. It's got a lot more power. It's rear wheel drive, we're on slick tyres, big brakes. It's just another world. Excellent. Is this your car then for uh, for the season? Team, yeah, I've got the car for the full season. It's owned and run by Team Brask, so it should be should be a good year. It's a proper outfit, so. Excellent. And do you think this is going to be quite a popular series over here? Yeah, yeah, I would say so, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's going to be fantastic. And you, are you going to uh, scare me to death out here now? I hope so. Oh, excellent. I can't wait, I can't wait. Thanks a lot, Christian. No Cheers. Problem. Let's kick some ass. Thing, man, I'm getting into racing. That is unbelievable. Absolutely awesome. That is. What was it like, mate? Brilliant, brilliant. Going around the fence. Yeah. Awesome. What's awesome. the power like, man? Powerful. Dead, dead powerful. Really yeah. good. He's a dead good driver as well, actually. It was yeah. really, really good. Yeah. So feels safe. Feels safe as house. Yeah. There wasn't much room for talking, though, to be honest with you. But uh, can't hear a thing, can you? No, and I couldn't gauge how fast we were going, but it was bloody fast. Brilliant. <laughs> there you go. He's gone. He's left us. He's gone to the toilet. This car is built around sound quality. There's 1500 watts of pure music power inside this car that comprises of three amplifiers, two pieces of headset and 11 speakers. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of kit. How you fitted it all in a minute? Uh, that was done over 600 hours with three people all playing a part in it. There's everything inside the car has been gutted and been taken out, refitted, put inside, fitted, listened to, not like, taken out, refitted. And that's been done over about 25 times, that. <laughs> so, I mean, you've got loads of controls on here. I mean, are they all needed? Minis are really small. I mean, you can reach it, can't you? Yeah, uh, each control has a different purpose, but these ones really, I just turn the controls for the volume up off that one. I have a voice activator on side here as well. And so, so what does the voice activator do? The voice activator can choose your radio stations as well as choosing one of 51 discs that are in the back behind my seat. A 51 disc? Yeah. I mean, these are huge fun dads anyway. I mean, they're very quick, but you've gone quicker, haven't you? Yeah, gone a lot quicker. How have you managed that, mate? Uh, fit a nitrous oxide to it. Right, so, how have you done that? Basically, it's a kit that you buy, mm -hmm. a bottle in the boot, which holds the nitrous, which is connected to two solenoids, and basically just puts it into the engine through the carburetor. Right, so it just injects it straight into the... Straight into the mix? That's right. So how does it work, nitrous? What it does is it injects fuel and nitrous together, and when it mixes, it, it creates a molecule of oxygen, which uh, basically races the engine, you know, explodes the pistons twice as fast. Right, so, I mean, uh, how fast a boost is that going to give you? Well, on top of it, it's already brake horsepower, another 50 brake instantly when you flick it on. So is that, is that a choice of 50 brake horse, could you...? No, you can start from 25 brake jets and go up to 125 brake jets instantly. Right, so you're talking about actual little jets yeah, that you put into the engine? Yeah, little jets that fit into the uh, solenoids and it basically pushes out the amount of nitrous you use. So 125 brake jets? Is the maximum, yeah. Is the maximum. It's a bit daft, I think. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you want to put that on there and rip your engine apart. No, no. <laughs> Probably pull the bumper off. <laughs> How easy is it to fit? It's quite easy, actually, I fit it myself. Did you really? Yeah, because they charged quite a bit to fit it, so they gave me instructions and I did it myself. Just went off and did it? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're obviously going to have to work it from the cabin itself. 
Yeah. Uh, so how do you manage to do that? Right, it's activated by two switches. One's a protection switch, and the other one basically just flick it on, and it works. So what do you mean by a protection switch? Well, what it does if, when the engine's stopped, if nitrous leaks into the pistons, uh, and you turn the engine over with a spark, it will explode, basically. And blow your engine just up. Just blow the engine up. Blow so, your car up, probably, as well. <laughs> yeah, so you switch it off, which turns the engine over with no spark. So it cleans the piston pots. Right. Make sure there's no nitrous in them. Then you just flick it on, and the engine starts. That's right. it. Make sure it's safe. No, so no it clears everything out for yeah, you, and then it's safe yeah, to turn safe. over. And then, like you're saying, your other switch, you just switch you it on when it you on, want it. Put your foot to the floor, which activates another switch, then tells the... Uh, solenoids to basically put it all into engine. To thrust it all in there. Yeah. So, I mean, that must be huge fun. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Looks a little bit different in here to any other Mondeo I've seen, to be honest with you. Yeah, apart from the engine is the other way around to a normal one. They're transverse normally, this is north-south. Um, it's four-wheel drive. Yep. Uh, and it's a Cosworth engine, yeah. Beauty, beauty. So, uh, this is quite a powerful car at the end of the day, from what you've been telling me. Uh, uh, the right side of 500 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, like we said, it's four-wheel drive. It is, yeah, so you so, can put the traction down. Yeah, and it, it's safe to say it goes like a rocket, yeah? Yeah, very, very quick. So, <laughs> you've done some work at the front here as well. We noticed that the, uh, it's got kind of a cosy look to it. You've got the bonnet vents there and, uh, and the front spoilers and everything. Yeah, it's more functional than looks. Uh, we was getting problems with getting air, because the car's a slippery shape, getting air into the car and air out, so we had to make room to, you know, for it to get in and get out. And how long has it taken you to uh, fin get this project sorted out, kind of finish it off? Uh, well, a project is never normally finished, but to get it to this stage, it took me about two years. Well, basically what it is, is a 1600 modified bottom end. It's running steel cranks, steel rods. Uh, it can rev to eight and a half thousand RPMs. Uh, it's got Cosworth management system. It's running green injectors, three bar map sensor. It's got a big uh, oil separator tank now, two engines and two management systems. And what kind of brake horsepower is it running on? Uh, let's just say it's over the two, 250 mark, possibly over the 300, but... Yeah. Well, that's it. Not just for the episode, but for the series. It's over, isn't it, Dave? It is, yeah. Big thanks to everyone for coming up here and making the effort. And big thanks to you lot for watching it. And we've got a second series coming out, so... Uh... That's right, mid-August. What we tried to do in this series is show you cars past and present that you can modify. So between now and August, get out there, start modifying, and get to the shows, because that's where we're going to be. Send us some pictures as well of your stuff so we can feature you perhaps in the next series. Thanks a lot anyway. See ya. See you later. If I'm sweeping, you better start moving that. Get lost. Come on, I'm going to move on. Get lost, I'm going to brew it.